Welcome back everyone. This time we're going to calculate the residuals and then optimise our model. So what is a residual? A residual is the difference, the vertical difference between an observed data point, say this blue one, and the predicted Y value that the model is giving. Sometimes, like this one here, the, res the data point is too high, so that's positive residual. Sometimes they're very, very close, that would be almost a zero residual. And sometimes the data points are too low. They would be negative residuals. So what do we do? Well, we have to perform a calculation. So let's label this residual. And a residual is the actual Y coordinate. So in this first case, 15.3. Subtract the predicted Y coordinate by the model there, 11.06. So that first residual is positive four. That first blue dot is positive 4.3 units higher than the model predicts. Let's copy all of those down. Now, as I already mentioned, some are positive, some are negative. We really want to, uh, to not have positives and negatives. If we add positives and negatives, they sort of counteract each other's effect. We don't want that. We want each residual to be telling us its own story. So we square the residuals. Let me just move my chart over a little bit out of the way. So we will square. Now that makes them a fair bit larger, but importantly, they're all positive. And then what do we do? Well, we want the residuals squared and then summed, RSS. That's it, let's just push that over to the right. And I will use the Excel form sum. I will highlight all of those. And that's my sum. My residuals were squared and then summed, RSS. That's a pretty large number. And that's because I have some pretty big gaps here between my, res my data points and my model. So what do I want to do? I want to change the values of these numbers. Remember, we were leaving the frequencies fixed. We had good reasons to believe the frequencies were those numbers. But these ones we were guessing. I could guess and check. I could change that amplitude from seven. Yeah, let's look at this residual value, this RSS, it's three and a half thousand. If I change that to six, I change to 3,100. That's better. The, the better the match, the smaller the residuals, the smaller the squares, and the smaller the total sum. So I can just look at that single value as a measurement of whether my model is fitting better than the last. Let's reduce that down to five. It's even better still. I'll keep going, reduce down to four. Much better, 2,400. I'm not so much looking at the picture, I'm looking at the number. Let's go down to three, 2,200. Two, just over 2,000. Go down to one. Let's go down to should we go down to zero, as if that part of the model doesn't exist? Didn't make much difference, really. So we could repeat this for the next amplitude and the next, and then for the, free, uh, the phase angles. But I tell you, there is a better way. Excel has, under the Data tab, a feature called Solver. Now, with Solver, we can basically do guess and check automatically. I want to change, I want Solver to target this number, this value. I want it to be minimized. And what are we, what are the variables we're changing? The variables are those ones there, not the frequencies. Now, there's a little box here. Sometimes it has a tick in it for basically making all these tends to work better if you leave that unticked and then we press solve and see what happens. It took a little while to think about it but I think you can see straight away the picture is a much much better match and look at the value of that residual square sum. It's all the way down to 4.2. With me it was up in the thousands so I will definitely accept that solution and that it's still not perfect if I was to zoom right in, I would see some small discrepancies, 
we can see these residuals. Some are still small negatives and some are positives, but they're much, much, much better than they were. And that, that set of numbers there are my frequencies, amplitudes and phase angles for the components in my harmonic model. And that number is the vertical translation. So I could then use those numbers, put them into the formula and make predictions. I could run the model forwards in time to see what was about to happen. Now that is enough, I think, for this video segment. Thanks for watching.